Next I'm going to add my control horn for my elevator. I've cut that from a piece of a gift card. Yummy calamari. Um, bent it, shaped it, drilled a hole the same size as your push rod is going to be. And note that the distance front to back from the control horn is about half an inch. Push it up from the bottom just like that. If the slit is a little too small, the horn will actually cut itself a bigger one and then you can see the control horn is in place and I can make the additional bend to engage the push rod into the control horn. So here's what this looks like from the bottom. Here's the elevator. There's the fuselage. Here's my control horn and I've actually cut a little recess here to allow the hole of the control horn to come closer to being right directly over the hinge itself. And so the hole is facing forward where it will engage the push rod and it's just pushed through like that. And notice that it allows full excursion back and forth of the elevator. Once that's confirmed, I put a little hot glue underneath here and usually a little bit along the seam as well. Push that into place and hold it. Also be certain that you don't make this slit more than half the distance between the hinge and the trailing edge so there's still a nice intact piece of elevator bridging between the two halves. If this slit cuts further than halfway, I'll usually actually split this tab and fold half of it towards this way and half of it this way. So it does like this. And that will help support the individual edges, but in general you can avoid going half more than halfway across. Keep this nice and strong. And a very similar technique to that is used on the aileron servos and control horns as well. Now it's time to place our battery mount in the nose and this big ugly square space is what makes the fugly jet so fugly but it gives you a great opportunity to place your battery in many different positions or use different size batteries. So because you want the center of gravity to be the standard place about a third of the way back on the cord or about here as with most planes, we start by choosing your battery. I myself like to use 2200 milliamp hours they give about four minutes of very aggressive full throttle flying with this plane and about six minutes of more casual flying. But you can use a smaller 1300, 1600 milliamp hour. You just need to place it further forward. But let's start with the 2200. So I think it's going to be about there. I just set it where I think it's going to be and pick, pick up my wing tips. And it's a little nose heavy at that point. So I can just slide it back. That seems just about right. And then of course if you want to use a lighter battery it's going to be a bit further forward when you balance the wing. That's pretty good. Use your discretion on that. If anything go CG a little further forward to start with. Now for this operation you'll need a handy gift card like this which you'll cut in half more or less about the width of a battery like that and then bend up the rear part to serve as a lip against which the battery can sit so that when you throw the plane the battery has no chance of sliding back sliding back into the plane so that little lip will catch it like that. You'll need a velcro strap I like this kind with a little buckle and some two-sided foam tape. So the central idea is that the gift card is going to be in place with the strap beneath it. A piece of foam tape here, foam tape here and then it's just stuck right in the desired position where your center of gravity ends up being a third of the way back in the cord. So here now is my battery pack with the strap in place. There's the gift card with the bend facing rearward. The two pieces of two-sided foam tape and I've marked right here where that needs to go. So just remove the backing from the tape Put it right down, right where it needs to go, and you're ready to hook it up and fly. Now while this nose design is really pretty hideous, it does allow you very easy access to your battery. It keeps the battery cool in flight. It's easy to swap them out. And also, this battery mount design will break away in a crash and minimize the damage to the rest of the plane. If you expect you might be doing some crashing 
it's a good idea to put a little chunk of uh, foam in front of the battery and just stack up a few pieces so that the inertia of the battery, if you do crash, as the battery flies forward, it'll crush that foam instead of destroying your battery. It might help a little bit. Okay, so what if you do crash and you munch up your nice nose here? Well, remember this piece that you cut off originally? You can just splice that right on at this position and replace your nose. So here's your spare nose, and what I usually do is take the old gift card and s stick it on the inside or a piece of foam would work well just to form a splicing tab there. Do that here and here, so that you have three of them, and then just sort of slot that onto the remaining part of your fuselage to reinstall your battery mount. Reapply tape here if you like, and you're ready to go.